in Perth, uh, often referred to as the most remote capital city in the world. And uh, hey, that's fine because we're online and our online experience is opening up a whole host of new opportunities to connect with people from right around the world. Uh, and not just connect with people, but also uh, bring people in. Uh, over the last uh, three to four months since we kicked off our online experience, we've had various friends of ours as guest speakers uh, from here in Perth, uh, from interstate, and also from overseas. And this morning, uh, well, actually, I say this morning, that's a bad habit. Today, <laughs> today, uh, we've got the great privilege of having one of my good friends, uh, Anthony Delaney. He's going to tell you it's pronounced Anthony, uh, which is a clue as to where he's from. Uh, but one of my good friends, Anthony Delaney from Manchester in the UK. Uh, he leads a great church over there called Ivy Church. And uh, I asked Anthony if he would be, uh, pre prepare a message for us and uh, speak to our online experience. And uh, so he, when he sent this over, um, I have to let you know, he apologized that it was too short. And then I watched it and I thought, he's right. It is too short. So uh, Anthony, if you're watching, and I hope you are, uh, we definitely want to have you back. Um, but in this case today, uh, it's uh, quality over quantity. So here is my good friend, Anthony Delaney. Hi, my name is Anthony Delaney from Manchester in England and uh, great friends of Mark and Louis from back in the day and such a privilege to talk to you today at Elevate Church. And today I want to talk to you about the most dangerous member of the church. Uh, a guy called James wrote me about this. James chapter 3. If you open up your Bibles, you can follow along as he talks about this member, this part of the body that can cause so much damage. It's actually, your tongue is a combination of four different muscles. So waggle it a little round a bit because we're going to be learning how to exercise our tongue and to use it and train that muscle so that we use it God's way. I don't know if you know, but the Bible talks a great deal about the power of the tongue. It says that actually the tongue is the most dangerous thing in the whole world. If you don't believe me, think about how many wars have started as a war of words. Why is it so deadly? Well, physically, of course, um, the, the, the mouth is more infested with bacteria than most other places on your body. In fact, it's second only to your digestive and urinary tracts for the amount of millions of microbes that there are of bacteria in there. I did read somewhere that your urine is actually a thousand times cleaner than your mouth. So enjoy your coffee. And, uh, and then obviously we can look at it spiritually. We can look at what the Bible says and how it links the mouth to the heart again and again. The Bible says that what's in my heart comes out of my mouth and the opposite is also true. We can tell what's in your heart really by what's coming out of your mouth. And that's why I'm, you know, I ask God to give me a new heart. I ask Jesus to forgive my life and give me a fresh start. And part of the training for what that is, is, is looking at the Bible and the words of the Bible can shape us. The book of James is going to give us some detail uh, on, on how God can train our tongue. Of course, actually, the Bible has so much to say about, about the, 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 the Proverbs 18 verse 21 says, says uh, that life and death are in the power of the tongue. And uh, newer translations go on to say, and we'll live with the consequences of our words. There are about 170,000 words in the English dictionary. And uh, according to The Guardian, the average speaker, uh, by the time that they are uh, two, they have 300 words. They have 5,000 by the time they're five and 12,000 by the time they're 12. And most stick around then. If you go to university, maybe you're going to get a few more. Shakespeare actually used 30,000 words, but then again, he made a lot up. Um, but whether you're a person who would describe yourself as a, a person of few words or many, we need to recognize the power that there is in our words. And, uh, you know, it can have real power. Um, you know, I, I once heard somebody say words are like nitroglycerine. They can either be used to mend and heal hearts or blow up bridges. The way the Bible would describe it is that we have two choices with our words. We can bless or we can curse. 
And in fact, the Bible has so much to say about the power of blessings and curses. There's about 600 passages speak directly to this in scripture about the supernatural power that can be added to our words, either from God or from our adversary, the father of lies, Satan, the accuser of the brethren. And now these can be passed down, positive or negative, so they affect not only our lives, but they go from generation to generation with either blessings or curses. So it's really important for us to think biblically about this. So, you know, if somebody's experiencing things where it just seems to go from bad to worse to worse, maybe that's because there's a curse and it needs to be broken. Or perhaps you've been in those times where you've just been blessed. Abraham was blessed seven ways. God appeared to him and said, I'm going to, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. And I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all families on earth will be blessed. What a complete blessing that is. And it says that when he was on his deathbed, as he was ready to leave this world, Abraham was ready to depart, but he says he was blessed in every way. What a way to live. That's how God wants us to live. Did you notice actually that in the middle of the blessings, there was a curse there. The curse was on everybody who cursed him because actually there's a blessing power that is far greater than, than curses. We don't have to live in fear of curses. We can come under the blessing of God. Now, there are nations around the world, I've visited some of them, where they, they wouldn't know that this is the case. They're not going to dismiss it like we do because we think we're civilized. Places like Haiti, um, India, uh, Kenya. And people know the power that there is uh, of blessings and of curses. Um, but actually, most of us don't need some witch doctor to go around and curse us. We do a pretty good job of that ourselves. Um, when you wake up and you start to feel down and you say, oh, today's going to be a rubbish day, or when you when you think, I'm so sick of living and what's the point? Or, I'm not going to make it. Or well, how is it? here's a good one. I'm sick and tired. Well, you know what? All those things are self-imposed curses. You're bringing down on yourself. Or maybe we speak them over other people too. Even sometimes in prayer, even unintentionally, we can end up um, by controlling people with our prayers. We can end up opening them up for we're either for poverty or for provision, for failure or for a future, for, for sickness or health. Mentally, you know, people just know that these days that the power of words of our, over our psyche. But what's the good news? Well, the good news is always Jesus. On the cross, God made a provision for this. And in Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, the apostle Paul talks about this. And he says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law because it is written, Cursed is everybody who dies on a tree, talking about the cross there, so that the, the blessing of Abraham might come upon those, us, who receive the Spirit through faith. See, when we receive the Holy Spirit, he can break the power of every curse. When, and, and our words then, we can use them to have enormous power to bless and not curse, to heal and not wound, to praise and build others up and not criticize. When we now realize how much power our words really carry. So diagnostic question, what usually comes out of your mouth? What's been coming out of it recently? Just review the last few days or what have you been writing down and sending to people? Has it been like a fresh spring or salty sea water? See, James says that people like me who get to teach are going to be subject to a, a stricter judgment. So I'm going to run through a few of the pictures that he uses really quickly because they're so helpful. But I'm going to leave you to be able to talk about it before I say too much and get myself in trouble. He says, watch out because your words can direct your life. If you're making notes, write the word direct down. He said, direct them like a horse's bit steers that huge horse. I spent some time in the mounted section in the police. You could steer the horse everywhere. A rudder of a ship can direct it too. And you, know, you could say just a little word and spoil everything. Somebody said the best way to bury a marriage is lots of little digs. Uh, maybe you, uh, you lied on your CV. Just a few words, little white lie doesn't make a difference until it's found out. And then you lose your reputation. Maybe you lose your career over that. People have so many regrets over the words that we write or we say. But we need to realize those words are gonna direct our lives. Next D is destroy. He says the tongue is a destroyer. It can destroy your life like a wildfire or a wild animal. It can, it can rip through a relationship. It can divide a church or a nation. You know, we think about Australia. Think about those wildfires. And uh, 27 million acres destroyed. Uh, 3,000 homes and many people dying, unfortunately, because these huge fires get started with a little spark. That's all it takes. And so James says, 
an untamed tongue is like a poisoned uh, arrow and it, it can it can be sharp uh, that's what it says in the psalms it says it can be sharp like a viper's tongue uh, the see the whole world james says gets created a cosmos gets created from lies it starts to spiral out of control it can pollute the world around you and change that world around you it can de divide a family it can discredit the leaders of a church it really quickly if you are, if you get pulled into it if you listen to those words and worst of all if you repeat them and get into slander that's why the final d we must decide in every circumstance not just what we're going to listen to but what we're going to say will we bless or will we curse and will we you know we can he says god doesn't god hates it when we lie and abuse and flirt and gossip and slander and deceive and make false promises and then we come into church and we go Oh, Lord, I love you. And we sing. He says, that's just so fake. Don't do it. It's fake. It's, it's, it's like bad water. It's, it's just like uh, it's salt water. It's, it's the wrong kind of fruit that he doesn't want to see in our lives. And that's why he wants us to tame the tongue. He says, all kinds of animals have been tamed. I once saw at the circus, the guy put his head in the lion's mouth. But, but what about the power in our, own, in our own mouths? And how can we train our mouths now, part of that, I think there's a clue here in terms of blessing. The more we we speak and proclaim blessing, maybe the, the less we're going to pull other people down. Um, the Jewish people would pray three times a day, 18 benedictions, 18 blessings, and they'd always finish. One finishes with a blessing. So maybe we need to bless more and then we'll curse less. And, you know, a couple of other practices, because, you know, I need to do this as much as you do. I fully agree with what James says here when he says none of this gets this right all the time. None of us is perfect in what we say. I need to mature in this area. I need God's Holy Spirit to wash my mouth out and, uh, and, and to change it. Because you know what? There's so much I can be negative about in the world right now and weigh in with my opinion on. But the antidote to that poison, he says, is is uh, two things. Well, number one, the church has tried to deal with this. Number one, first of all, with silence, learning to be quiet, not having to speak, just pausing. Again, James says earlier on, be slow to speak and quick to listen. Now that's hard for me because I'm a talker. Um, but the Bible also says, when words are many, sin is not absent. So I, maybe I need to rein that in more. For some of you, the opposite is, is, is true because actually you're really good at being quiet. But actually, what about you speaking up and speaking out some blessings and some encouragement to other people? Because they don't know it until you say it or unless you say it. But by speaking those words out of blessing, perhaps you can direct somebody else's life into the plans that God has got for them. You can add courage to them. You can say, I'm praying for you and I care for you and I'll be there for you. And uh, you can defend and, and counter a lie with the truth. You can speak in all these ways. And in that way, my prayer for you and for myself is that we would be blessed and that we, with our mouths and with our lips, would be a blessing. I'm going to finish with a prayer from the Psalms that says, Keep back your servant from presumptuous sins and let them not have dominion over me. So shall I be upright and innocent of great salvation of, of great transgressions let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight O lord my strength and my redeemer amen now we can't see you on the other side of whatever screen it is that you're joining us but we would love